Junior Roberts here. In this video, we're going to be looking at uh, a question on radioactivity, right? specifically focusing on physics of the atom of the CSEC physics syllabus. So let's go right into it. So it says a nuclide of uranium 238 is represented by the symbol below, and we're able to see the symbol right here. Now it says we're to tell how many neutrons does this nuclide have? Now we can remember from our nuclide representation, let us say we represent a nuclide by the symbol X, right? We know that this nuclide will have a mass number, which we give the symbol A, and it will also have an atomic number, which we give the symbol Z. So we see that our mass number is at the top and the atomic number will be at the bottom. Now there's a relationship between the mass number and the number of nucleons inside the nucleus of any nuclide or in other words of any atom. Now that relationship is given as A is equal to Z plus N where A is our mass number, Z is our atomic number and N is the number of neutrons. Now in this case we want to find the number of neutrons so what we can say then now is that N which is the number of neutrons will be equal to when we rearrange this equation, we're going to get n is equal to a minus z. So now, we will have a, which is in our case, 238. So we say 238 minus 92, right? And if we grab a calculator, right, and we say 238 minus 92, we get an answer of 146. So therefore, this right, the number of neutrons n, will be equal to 146. And that would be our answer. Now it also asks us to find out how many protons does this nuclide have. Now we can tell the number of protons by considering, considering our nuclide notation. Now we have our mass number right here and our atomic number. Now the atomic number, it actually tells us the number of protons. Now you might remember that the atomic number is also known as the proton number. So in this case, what we're going to see is that our number of protons, so we could say number of protons of protons is equal to our atomic number, which is 92. So we get 92, just like that. All right? Now, continuing down, it says that the mass number of the uranium nuclide is 238, using the same notation and electron is represented by this symbol right here. Its mass number is zero. Does this mean that the nucleon has zero mass and we have to explain our answer? Now, in this case, we know that the electron, electron has what we say now negligible, negligible mass. Right? This means that the mass of the electron is very, very small. Right? Almost negligible. Right? Now, the approximate mass of the electron is um, about 9.9 point, uh, 9 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms, or approximately 1 over 1,840 times the mass of a proton, right? So the relative mass of an electron compared to the proton is about 1 over 1840. Now that value is, um, in kilogram, is about 9.91 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms, right? So that's a very, very negligible mass, right? So what this means is that the electron, it has a mass, right? Now, based off of this notation right here, as we said up top right here, A represents our mass number, which is the number of nucleons inside the nucleus of an atom. Now, in this case now, the nucleons are our protons and neutrons. Now, the electron, it has no protons nor neutrons inside its nucleus. So that is why we have a zero, well, as a matter of fact, it has no nucleus, right? So that is why we have a zero right here. So what we could say now is that the zero, the zero 
in the notation, right, which is given right here, represents the number of nucleons of nucleons nucleons but the electron has no nucleons right nucleons sorry nucleons and let me just write that properly no new cleons so that is why we represent it with a zero just like that all right so let's go further so the next question says that uranium 238 the uranium 238 decays by emitting an alpha particle to form thorium 234 which has a symbol of th and we're at a complete equation for this reaction so we're going to have uranium decaying to form thorium and it's going to also give off an alpha particle, which as we know is an helium nucleus. Now we can represent that by 4 and 2 because the helium nucleus will have two protons and two neutrons right, inside its nucleus. And it, since it has two protons, then its atomic number will be 2. Now, from this equation right here, we are aware that, okay, the mass number must be conserved. So in other words, the mass number on this side must equal to the mass number on this side. So we have 238 on the left-hand side. We're going to have 238 plus 4, which also give us 238. So also know the atomic number must also be conserved. So we have 92 right here, and we have 2 right here. So this one right here must be 90. So we can have 92 on this side, and we have 90 plus 2, which also gives us 92. So continuing... So the next question says that the thorium decays in turn by beta decay to form protactinium, which is a symbol of Pa, and we have to complete the equation for this decay. So uh, since we have our beta particle, which is represented by an electron, we can write in information right here. This is going to be minus 1 and 0, just as we saw up top. Right? Now, in this case now, thorium had a atomic number of 90 which we found out up top so we can just put by 90 right there now in this case now the mass number will be conserved also so the mass number on this side is 234 we have zero right here so this one also must be 234 so we're gonna have 234 right there now the atomic number now right in this case the atomic number we have minus one right here but we must get about 90 on this side so in order for us to get but 90, we must have 91 because 91 plus, 9, 91 plus minus 1 will give us 90. So this becomes 91. So that would be our expression. Now let's continue down, continue down. So the next question says, a radioactive material decays with a half-life of 3 days. Right? Now on the grid below, plot a graph to show how an initial mass of 8 grams decays over a period of 15 days. So since... The material has a half-life of three days. What this simply means is that every three days, the mass of that sample will reduce by a half. So if it starts, let us say, at three, so we could put, well, it starts at a mass of eight grams when the time is zero, so the initial time. So we could consider that, okay, we're going to have volley right there. So when it, that's the initial, right? Now, after three days, is going to go down to half of that which is four so that's going to correspond to three days so we could have a point right here all right so what we're doing we're just considering our idea of the half-life the half-life is the time taken for the mass or the activity of a radioactive sample to reduce to half its previous value so in this case it was eight so after one half life which is three days it's going to go down to half of eight which is four now, after three more days now, which will take us up to six days, it's going to go to half of four, which is two. So we'll go right here. And again, we're doing this up to 15 days. So that's um, after six days. Now, now, after three more days, it's going to go to half of two, which is one. So three more days will take us up to nine. So it goes right here. 
right? And then three more days will take us up to half of one, which is 0.5. So that's take, that takes us up to 12 days, which is 0.5. So it's going to be about right here, right? And then for three more days, it's going to go to half of a half, which is 0.25. So that's going to go to, um, so 15 days is going to go to about here, which is 0.25, because each of these is 0.2, so 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, um, 1, 1 1.2, so this is 0 0.2, 0 0.4, so this would be 0 0.25, would be about slightly above the 0 0.2 line. So now, we can now make a nice curve. Right, so I'm able to get somewhat of a smooth curve, right, as we're seeing here, right? So that would be um, graph, right, um, over, over 15 days. So I went up all the way to 15 days just like that. Now it says, how much of the radioactive materials, rep how much of the radioactive material remains after five days? So we can use our graph to determine that. So we just find five days, which is right here. And what we do is with a ruler, we will extrapolate, right? The amount of sample, amount of substance remain, that remains after five days. So we're gonna find five days using a broken line, we we'll go straight up. So broken line going straight up like that. Then once we touch the graph, we go straight over to the Y axis so we can read off the corresponding mass. So going straight across like this. All right, we see that the mass is about 2, 2.2, 2.4 grams. So the mass then now is going to equal to 2.4 grams. So that would be the amount of substance that remains after five days, 2.4 grams. So now, continuing, it says that if the pressure on the material were 10 times greater, how much would it remain after 9 days? Now, in this case now, what we're going to see is that the pressure right, would not, not affect the half-life or the activity of the sample. Right, half life or the activity. So, since the activity is not affected, then the half life will not be affected. Right, so what we're going to see then now is that the um, mass will just be looking at the graph, it will be the same value that we would get after nine days, which is uh, well, based on the graph right here, right, based on our graph again using our broken line. Right, and again, it all depends on um, you know, how we draw this curve. I'm going to try my very best to get a smooth curve. Right, so, right, in this case, it would be, uh, I'm going to read off this shortly. So, reading this off, we see we get this is point two, well, point 0.2, point 0.4, point 0.6, almost point 0.8, so we're going to say point 0.7. Right, so it would be roughly 0 0.7 grams. I mean, if we had gotten a smoother curve, we would have gotten a much more accurate reading. But from the graph, you know, once you're able to show this, right, we would be able to secure our points. So, this was a question on radioactivity. So, again, Junior Roberts, if there's anything in this video that you would want to get clarification on, Post it in the comments and I'll do my best to clear it up for you. Like this if it was helpful. Click subscribe on the bell so you're updated whenever I post new videos like this. Thank you for watching.